On August 25th, Turkey's thin-skinned proto-fascist tyrant Tayyip Erdogan officially joined the geopolitical clusterfuck in Syria when he sent Turkey's armed forces to lead a cross-border incursion ostensibly to fight Daesh, or the so-called Islamic State, but transparently as an effort to halt the brakes on advances by the Syrian Democratic Forces led by the Kurdish People's Protection Unit, or YPG, which has been making territorial gains in the region that Syria's Kurds have rechristened as Rojava. For many outside observers of the Syrian civil war, the Rojava revolution has been a lonely beacon of hope in an otherwise bleak fucking tragedy and anarchists and other revolutionaries around the world have accordingly flocked to the show solidarity with their cause. This has ranged from the establishment of Rojava solidarity chapters in cities and countries across the world, all the way to peeps traveling to join international battalions of volunteer fighters on the front lines in an act of international solidarity that harkens back to the Spanish Civil War. Over the past several years, the liberated cantons of Rojava have witnessed some of the most inspiring revolutionary transformations in modern history, most notable being its grassroots tef den system of participatory democracy and the accompanying self-organization and mass empowerment of women. Freedom for Kurdistan starts with freedom for women. When women are free, then Kurdistan will be free. These hard-fought gains have been all the more impressive given the fact that they've taken place while waging an existential war against the genocidal fucking jihadis of Daesh. But while this will no doubt piss a lot of peeps off, Ah boy, here we go! The uncomfortable truth is that many supporters of Rojava have adopted a dogmatic, uncritical approach to the Kurdish struggle in northern Syria, particularly its military aspect, and in the process have ignored or downplayed actions that not only contradict fundamental principles of the Rojava revolution, but also pose serious fucking threats to its future viability and the spread of values within the region. Kurds have a long and tragic history of betrayal and oppression at the hands of the different states and ethnic groups that surround them on all sides. Under the Assad regime, they were officially banned from speaking their own language and were targeted by so-called Arabization politics aimed at controlling natural resources and manipulating ethnic demographics in the region. One of the main tenets of Rojava's Tef Dev system has been an embrace of secular pluralism and cultural and political autonomy for different ethnic groups and religious minorities. At the same time, the Democratic Unity Party, or PYD, the ruling Kurdish political party in Rojava, has pursued a policy of geographically linking the three Kurdish cantons of Afrin, Kobani, and Jazira, which are physically separated from one another by large thwas of land, primarily populated by Arabs. YPG militia from the start of the revolution has been working for its own interests. It created an autonomous area. It never recognized the Syrian revolution, but it used it to create its own state. The efforts to link the cantons militarily has provoked a great deal of inter-ethnic strife in northern Syria. Syria, with YPG forces benefiting from both US and Russian airstrikes, in the latter case leading to ethnic cleansing of rebel-held positions in the province of Aleppo. YPG supporters have tended to justify these actions by claiming that the Arab forces they have been targeting are all head-chopping jihadis, or members of Daesh, or al-Nusra. Hopefully this doesn't become a self-fulfilling prophecy, and the YPG and local militias of the Free Syrian Army are able to come to an understanding and mutual fucking coexistence. This is especially important now that Turkey's military has joined the fray, and Erdogan, drunk on the authoritarian fucking powers he sees in the wake of July's failed coup, has begun further cracking down on Kurds in southeastern Turkey. While it's important that anarchists fully support aspirations of Kurdish autonomy and self-determination, whether in Syria, Turkey, Iraq or Iran, it's also important to support the autonomy of Syrians in other parts of the country who are struggling against a fucked up combination of authoritarian Islamists, the Assad regime, and its Iranian and Russian backers. They are more powerful with weapons, but we are more powerful in our hearts. Many of you have your freedom because of a revolution. The time for our freedom is now.